हॅलो आय एम डॉक्टर मेधा ताडपत्रीकर प्लास्टिक इज एव्हरीवेअर फ्रॉम युअर वॉटर बॉटल्स टू युअर क्रिस्प पॅकेट्स इवन द टायनी फायबर्स इन युअर टी शर्ट्स आवर ऑन द गो लाईफस्टाईल रिक्वायर्स डिस्पोजेबल प्रॉडक्ट्स फ्रॉम द कॅन टू बॉटल ऑफ वॉटर बट ॲक्युमुलेशन ऑफ दीज has led to the increased amount of plastic pollution around the world many of us use these products without even thinking where they might end up some sources estimate around 8 million metric tons of plastic enters oceans each year and the current projections are far from positive global plastic production is likely to double in next 20 years and if we continue with our current rate we may see more plastic in the ocean than the fish plastic is incredibly useful material it is one of the least expensive and most widely available and overused items in the world rapid urbanization and population growth increases the demand for the cheap plastics and let's not forget the more population increases so does the amount of garbage we create but because plastic is affordable and durable it is utilized in every other way from our packaging material to our bottles containers straws to our plastic bags but unfortunately it is not biodegradable and plastic waste has a potential to significantly harm our environment in the form of air water and the land pollution uh because plastic is so cheap we actually end up with having a, a disposable mentality we do not hang on to any single product for a long time but when we dispose of the plastic waste it it does not decompose easily and pollutes everywhere the chemical bonds that make up plastic are very strong and made to last so the decomposition rate of the plastic depending on the type is around 500 to 600 years the disposal of plastic is often mismanaged so it ends up in our landfill more than one third of the world's population does not have access to the uh, collection system so the waste either ends up in a landfill or it is burned or it stays in the community the biggest cause of plastic pollution in the nature is simply how much we use and throw away of the all the waste that has been generated in the last 6 decades only 9% has been recycled and more than 72% is still lying in our landfills or clogging up the nature as a litter as many synthetic plastics is not biodegradable so it means that when you throw away the plastic waste it stays in the natural environment for hundreds of years and that is known as the plastic pollution the escalation of plastic waste and the pollution is difficult to manage because we have so many sources of plastic waste and other similar challenges the situation is dire simply put plastic pollution occurs when the plastic waste is gathered in the area and has began to have a negative impact on the natural environment and that creates a problem it creates a problem for the plants it creates a problem for the wildlife as well as human population this often includes killing of plant life posing danger to the local animals you see one of such incidents change the course of my life i'm the accidental environmentalist who had no idea what plastic was or how wonderful and versatile the product is or disadvantage of it when it causes a pollution to the environment i think at certain point of life we all start to think about the purpose of our life in my case i think the cause had chosen me after witnessing the death of a deer in a wildlife sanctuary we realized actually we found out that it had the plastic waste in its stomach and because of uh, digesting that waste the deer has died 
that death had a huge impact on my life. Because though it is prohibited to take the plastic waste uh, in the form of anything or dropping it off in the wildlife sanctuary, people just like you and me take it and create hazard for the animals by littering. So when we came back, we started to find out more about plastic and what happens to it when it becomes waste. Our experiment had actually started in the kitchen. First, we put the plastic in the uh, pressure cooker. Nothing happened. So we thought it's a small pressure cooker. So we decided to put it in the bigger pressure cooker. It burst. So we decided to take the whistle out. Again, nothing happened. So slowly and steadily, we started researching, we started finding out. So we put a, a plastic tube to the where the whistle goes. Again, nothing happened. And then we put the another end of that uh, tube into the water. It took a time. But after a you know, search experiment, we found some black color uh, liquid floating on top of that water. We got it tested and we realized they are hydrocarbons similar to our fossil fuel. So we decided to build a first pilot machine. Our process is called as thermocatalytic depolymerization, where we convert end of life, traditionally non-recyclable plastic waste into usable fuel. Now this fuel can be used for burning or can be converted into electricity. Actually plastics are very valuable waste material as they contain carbon, they contain hydrogen, and have the similar energy content of fuel such as diesel. The process is simple. We actually first uh, shred the plastic to reduce its volume, then put it in a reactor. Now the machine is heated by our fuel only, the fuel that is generated in the process. So around 160, 170 degrees, the plastic starts to melt. We do not burn plastic, but rather melt it. So chemical reaction is different. At around 200 degrees, we get the mixtures of various gases that starts to come out. Now these gases are scrubbed and then, you know, further processed uh, into the uh, heating source. So the whole machine fully runs on the gas and the liquid fuel that is generated in the process itself. Around 270, 280 degrees, we start to get the liquid fuel out. For around from 1000 uh, kilograms of plastic waste, we get anywhere between 500 to 750 liters of uh, the liquid fuel, around 20 to 30 percent of the gas and uh, around 5 to 7 percent of the char. Now this liquid fuel can be used in a generator, furnace, burners, boilers, trawlers or it can be used to generate the electricity. The char along with the plastic waste can be mixed with a bitumen to making of the roads. Now this reduces the potholes, increases the life of the road as well as saves the cost of making of the road. It also helps uh, with the increased life of the tires as well. Thermocatalytic depolymerization process and the fuel that is generated in the process are fr you know, environmentally friendly and it's a green process itself. Now while working on the plastic waste to oil technology, we realize that there is a awareness is less in the society. So we started creating the awareness of segregation at source, advantages of plastic as a product and disadvantages of plastic pollution. So we just started going and telling people about this. And then we realized that only creating awareness is not enough. So we started uh, the collection, collection of plastic waste from various households. Today, we are collecting plastic waste from thousands of households, offices, schools. Uh, even people send us plastic by the courier. Basically, uh, this is all type of thin plastic, which is end of life. There is, you know, traditionally non-recyclable kind of a plastic. Because to think that innovation or technology is the only solution for the effective plastic management, 
is a fallacy. We all need to change the way we think about the waste or how we treat the waste is also important. Our waste is not anyone else's problem. It's our problem. So we have to segregate the plastic waste in our household or where we generate it. Also, we have to make sure that we follow uh, refuse. We can just say, I do not want that plastic bag. You can take your cloth bag or the bag for life uh, with you when you go for shopping. Then we again have to reuse and make sure that we recycle the plastic waste, whatever we generate. Also, there is a misconception about the recycling of plastics. But all types of plastic can be recycled and can be converted into useful form of energy. See, composition of plastic makes it one of the most valuable waste material for the energy generation. So basically, we all need to have to think of waste as a resource. Instead of saying waste management, we have to focus it as a resource management. Battling plastic waste is much more complex than fighting COVID-19. And it needs governments, NGOs, industry, researchers, as well as the public to work together to form collaborative approaches. Plastic pollution makes the climate change worse and they must be tackled in harmony to save animals as well as human life. The current increase in a single use plastic during the COVID is understandable, but this simply cannot go on for a long time. And we must need to think about the uh, long-term health of our planet. In our landfills, we have a huge number of hydrocarbon just lying around. That's actually the plastic waste. And if we can convert them into the energy, it will have the positive impact on a climate change. Thank you.